night band. I remember all the big games, all the trick plays. It's been here for 20 years, and here it's gonna stay. I gotta get ready, make everything right, cause Monday night football's coming on tonight. Uh, are you ready for the football? play called right because all my rowdy friends are here for Monday night. Everybody's a fan. Hey, this is the biggest party. Yeah, Frank and Al and Dan, they really got it started. Week after week, it's the time that is right. All oh, my rowdy friends are here on Monday night. Right. And I Stadium, Anaheim, California, a sellout crowd on hand as two long time NFL rivals, the 49ers and the Rams, meet in a key NFC matchup. Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford. Terrific matchup coming your way tonight. We're glad you are with us. These two bitter rivals for over 40 years, perhaps reflecting to some degree the rivalry that actually exists between the two cities here in California, San Francisco and Los Angeles. In any event, the 49ers come in 11 and 2, and they know, even though they clinched a wild card, a win tonight, and they win the Western Division of the NFC once again. They tie up home field advantage through the playoffs, so they have a lot on the line. And the Rams themselves at 9 and 4 know that if they can win tonight, they will have sensed at least a wild card into the playoffs. But they also know if they win tonight, and the 49ers should slip up next week against either Buffalo and then the following week against Chicago. And they go on, the Rams go on to beat the Jets and their final opponent, the New England Patriots. They will win this division. Both teams tied at 12 and 4, but they would win on head and head because they would have defeated the 49ers twice this season. Now, a lot on the line, as I said, but. Well, this is a 49er Ram game, and if there was nothing on the line, it'd be worth sitting in and watching. It's a great rivalry. I think it's going to be a terrific game. And the funny thing, too, Frank, is that the Rams, I think, have become maybe the most exciting team in the National Football League. And who would have believed it? John Robinson has always loved the run. At USC, he had the two Heisman Trophy winners, Marcus Allen and Charles White. Then here with the Rams, he loved the run. He had Eric Dickerson, of course, and then he plugged in White. But now it's become a passing team. And how did it happen? In 1986, they got Jim Everett after Everett was drafted by Houston, couldn't come to terms with the Oilers. In 87, they brought in Ernie Zampezi to liven up the offense. Then last year, quietly, they became a passing team. And now they are a passing dominated team this year. The Rams under John Robinson, I never thought we'd ever say it or even think it, think pass first and run second. And Dan, people are beginning to talk about Jim Everett with Montana type adjectives but he still has a long way to go after all there still is only one Joe Montana and could there possibly be a better compliment uh, if you're a quarterback than to be compared to the great one Joe Montana and, and when I think of Joe Montana I you know I'm almost a little melancholy because I, I, I think of, of how Frank Sinatra can sing into his later years and a uh, Mitchner can be prolific and some of the great masters can paint all their lives and yet an athlete's uh, life in terms of his his work is it's finite and Joe Montana's career certainly you can see the end out there and it's it's almost not fair that such a great player has to quit playing the game but sooner or later his body will fail him right now with sore ribs so what do we do how do we look at tonight's game well, I think it's very simple we sit back we relax and we watch the greatest quarterback the National Football League has ever known having the best year any quarterback has ever had. Pass the popcorn. I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs> Sit back and enjoy it. And there he is. His practice time was limited last week, but that is nothing new. And of course, when they have to go to the bench, they can bring in Steve Young, as they have on a couple of occasions this season, including last week at Atlanta, when Young came off the bench and helped guide them to a 13-point victory over the Falcons. So on a very breezy night in Anaheim, the 49ers kick off to the Rams and we're underway and it's taken by Ron Brown at the goal line out past the 10 and out to the 25 yard line and the Rams will set up shop there with this high powered offense and Jim Everett out of Purdue again drafted by Houston in 86 came to the Rams in mid year and really came into his own about midway through the 88 season Bell and McGee the running backs Anderson and Eller who has missed the last two games with a full hamstring starting at wideouts Johnson the tight end and the veteran offensive line Panky Smith and Slater no strangers to the Pro Bowl from the 24 yard line Everett airing it out on first down and it's Willie Anderson making the catch at the 41 of San Francisco 
and it would figure the Rams, a passing team, go right to the air on first down. Well, who would have believed it a few years ago from John Robinson, who likes to run the football, but now he likes to throw the football. He likes to throw it big. Anderson down the sideline, ran one for one on Darrell Pollard. Beautifully timed out. And again, Pollard got caught in the inside, and Anderson, who had that great day, setting an NFL record a couple of weeks ago, gets the Rams into 49er territory. Anderson over a thousand yards this season to join Henry Ellard in four figures and Everett to the air again It's not a little swing pass and Whoa. Delpino really pays the price from Chet Brooks Brooks who is starting and remember he's the fella who came in at strong safety with Jeff Fuller Injured in the New England game and his career in jeopardy well, it's there's not a better way to tackle in the open field. Chet Brooks, uh, maybe you can criticize him for maybe not wrapping up his arms, but that is the way you deliver a blow. Del Pino held onto the ball, which was mo no small feat. And how about the way this game has opened up? A long bomb and a ferocious hit. I think we're going to get what we bargained for. Del Pino would have been better off dropping the ball. <laughs> it's a two yard loss. It's second down and 12. And Here's Bell who cuts it back and Bell gets just about back to the original line of scrimmage. Matt Millen in on the tackle. Greg Bell gained more yards in the first three games this season than he has in the last ten combined. Their running game has really tailed off. John Robinson says I'm not putting the blame on Bell. It's been the run blocking as well. Holt, Burt and Fagan up front with Haley, Millen, Walker and Turner the linebackers. Pollard and Griffin the corners. We know about Brooks, of course, and Ronnie Lott hits every bit as hard as Brooks. Third and 11. Everett throws. It's caught by Brown. Brown has a first down, and Brown skirting the sidelines is out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Ron Brown, who won a gold medal on the 4x100 relay team in the 84 Olympics, showing his speed, sprinting down the sideline, a gain of 27 first down Rams. Ron Brown really got on track a week ago. He touched down pass in the win over Dallas. He comes all the way across the field. He has that great speed. He came across the field so quickly and then turned it on and gets the Rams a first down at the 15. And poor Darrell Pollard was put in a chase position, and that's a race that he's, he's not going to win. There aren't many players in this league going to flag this guy down from behind. First and 10 at the 15-yard line. Here's Bell behind him. A McGee block plowing forward. And he takes it to the 10 yard Greg line, a gain of close to five. Brooks comes up with the ball, but the play is dead. The tackle was made by Pierce Holt. We have had a ferocious day of wind here in Southern California. The Santa Anas have been blowing this morning. There were gusts as high as 60 or 70 miles an hour. It's blowing quite hard up here at the top of Anaheim Stadium where we are. But down on the field, this is such a deep stadium that it's really not blowing that hard down on the field. It's not a factor right now. Bell goes out. Delpino is the sole back in this set. Second and five from the 10. Robert Delpino, and a flag goes down as he takes it to the nine-yard line, a pickup of one, and we'll have our first uh, call of the night from the referee, Gordon McCarter. And it will go against the 49ers. So George Seifert, in his first season, picking right up where Bill Walsh left off. Walsh winning three Super Bowls in his 10 years at the helm. Seifert, his longtime assistant, and that's incredible. 7-0 and are the 49ers on the road. Offside, number 53, defense. Five yards, still second down. That's Bill Romanowski, and it makes it second down and inches at the five. Well, that's a tough part of the field to give up a penalty like that, lining up off sides for a linebacker. Romanowski, the second player from the left side of your screen, you can see him just eager and antsy up on the balls of his feet and just kind of rolled forward a little bit into the neutral zone right at the snap. Second and inches, McGee in motion. And here's Del Pino. First down, flag is thrown. He's into the end zone for the touchdown. And there's a flag from the umpire, normally indicating offensive holding. And Jim Burt strutting around like uh, it was a hold on him. Jim Burt, an excitable player to begin with. Number 56 offense. 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. And that is against Doug Smith, the center, who's going one on one with Jim Burt. 
Let's take a look at it. I think we've got a good look here. Smith right here, and here's Jim Burt. Let's watch the block and see if we can pick up the hold. Jim Burt, notice how he got the leverage. He stood Smith up, and there's the right hand right on the jersey. And so while Romanowski takes a bad penalty for the Niners, now it's Doug Smith that sets the Rams back. Ten-yard penalty to the 15, making it second and 10. Everett off the play fake. Great protection. The ball lost it into that breeze and incomplete intended for Pete Holahan, the H-back, and a key receiver in the scheme of things for the Rams. He was covered by Darrell Pollard. And touched on the wind. It is gusting at times quite heavily down in the field. You can see the debris flying around, and that time, just as Everett dropped back, it was swirling around, and that ball caught some air and just drifted out of the end zone. But he also was being very careful with it. Good coverage. Tough to throw a touch pass if that's any indication. Well, you look at the streamers on the goalposts. Uh, one minute they're out, one minute they're down. I, maybe that kind of evening. Third down, 10 from the 15 yard line. Everett throwing over the middle. The catch is made at the three yard line by Aaron Cox and a first down. So on a third and 10, they pick up 12. It'll be first and goal. We talked about the maturity of quarterback Jim Everett standing in there, very cool, letting his receiver uncover. Here he is, and watch, he just rifles this sidearm, has a lot on it, and right into the waiting arms of Aaron Cox, who gets the first down, beating Ronnie Lott. Well, give the Rams offensive line some credit there, too, Frank, because that's a pattern that took just that half second longer to develop. And Jim Everett had the chance to step up into the pocket, get his sight lane. Well, what a big first down pass. First and goal, tight formation from the three. Bell is the tailback. Bell gets the ball. Bell has a touchdown. Greg Bell from three yards out on a most impressive opening drive by the Rams. Using almost four minutes of it. That's one way to keep Montana in check. That's Frank Bell off the field. That's his 12th rushing, rushing touchdown of the year. Behind Dalton and Hilliard of the Saints. And once again, that's a play we've seen over and over and over. That's the Rams version of the counter. Stutter step, pulling guard tackle from the backside. Six. Mike Lansford boots it through. And so the Rams. On the first series of the game, marching down the field, beginning it with a bomb, closing it off with this three-yard run by Bell. And they take a seven-to-nothing lead at Anaheim. Rams on top by a score of seven to nothing. Again, the Rams this season start with a five-game winning streak, and as we look down at Anaheim Stadium from the Goodyear blimp, L.A. had a four-game losing streak, and now another four-game winning streak. Coming in with a mark of nine and four. Lansford's kick is short, taken up at the 13-yard line, and run back out to the 21 by Keith Henderson, and let's go back and take a look at the touchdown by the Rams. It's going to come right at you. There's Tom Newberry, number 66, Irv Panky, number 75, the counter gap coming up through the hole, and the 49ers just removed from the line of scrimmage, and Greg Bell has a relatively easy time getting into the end zone. One of the great offensive lines in the game. Panky, Newberry, Smith, Slayton, and Slater. All-star. Of course, I'm an offensive lineman. Right? Uh, <laughs> I'm a little jaded. From the 22-yard line, Craig loses the football at the 23-yard line, but I believe he gets it back and does. He cradles it himself after a pickup of one. And it'll be second down and nine for this Pope San Francisco offense. Also a little older offensive lineman. Dan, and these guys are getting a little long in the tooth, but you could say maybe they're right at the peak of their maturity. There's the offensive line for San Francisco with... Harris, McIntyre, Sapolu, Collie, and Barton starting. Second down and nine from the 22-yard line as Montana retreats. Green gets picked up by Rathman, and Rice makes the catch, and with a nice move, finally gets taken down by five Rams. His forward progress gets him out to the 28-yard line. Fred Strickland, the first of the Rams, to reach him. Strickland and Larry Kelm had been hurt. Now they are back, and it's made a difference for the Rams defensively. 
And again, a lot of times you'll see that Eagle defense with two down linemen, five backers, Miller Wright and Bill Hawkins was their first round pick out of Miami. Kevin Green is their sack specialist. Kelman Strickland in the middle, Wilcher on the outside. The corners, the great Jerry Gray will be a safety next year. The veteran Irvin, Newsom and Michael Stewart are the safeties. Third down and four, San Francisco from the 28 yard line. Montana to put it up, has to step out of the pocket and then he hits Craig out at the 33 yard line and that's enough for a first down. Wilcher and Strickland in on the tackle and uh, per usual Montana loves to spread it around. It is such vintage Montana however he goes back a three step drop and he usually opens a game with either a three step drop or a five step drop looks downfield for Rice or Taylor they're not there he knows right away where Craig is going to be or Rathman is going to be and that's what the Rams are going to have to contend with particularly here in the opening moment as they go through the list of plays that they rehearsed literally last night talked about and they're going to go through them. Rathman in motion first and 10 from the 33 yard line and nothing doing right there as Mike Wilcher wraps up Roger Craig and pushes him back. Boy, the guy the guy sorry Frank the guy who really stuffs that play at the at the line is Bill Hawkins their number one draft choice. The rookie from Miami there's Hawkins number 70 next to Mike Wilcher and boy that play just had no place to go. The Rams may not have a lot of defensive linemen on their roster tonight only four. But the ones they have can play. Miller, Wright, and Hawkins having good years. Doug Reed won on injured reserve. Peel with a dislocated elbow. He's inactive tonight. They are really short up front. Second and nine as Rathman bulls his way and Mel Owens, among others, wrapping him up as he reaches the 37 yard line. It'll be third and about five. <laughs> And 49ers coming in with their four wide receivers and the Rams will adjust accordingly. The Rams of course play almost predominantly a zone defense and you think back at the way that the 49ers were able to pick apart the zone defense of Atlanta of course they're playing against different personnel but they'd like to go against the zone defense they like to hit the seams they like to hit their outside men on the quick slant. Third down call at seven from the 36 yard line. Montana stays in the pocket he hits Rice and Rice is stopped at the 40 yard line short of the first down by Anthony Newman number 26 the second year safety out of Oregon. Well that's an interesting pattern to go to Jerry Rice when you needed seven or eight yards to pick up a first down. This is really just a hitch Jerry Rice takes a couple stutter steps come on, comes underneath and really now the burden is on Rice to make something happen and some good open field tackling by the Los Angeles Rams. Anthony Newman, the number one guy there. Held in the kick, and it's a short kick held up by the wind, and a fair catch is made at the 34 yard line by the rookie Daryl Henley from UCLA. So Everett and the Rams takes over for the second time after a 26 yard held punt. 7.04 to go in the opening quarter. 7 0 Rams. Recent history for the Rams in 87, a five game winning streak, four game losing streak, a four game streak on either side of the ledger in 88. And then we talked about this year. Start with five wins, four losses in a row in the middle, and now a four game winning streak. From the 34, this is Del Pino picking up two as he takes it out to the 36 yard line. He was a find in the draft, was Del Pino last year, fifth round pick out of Missouri. Went to Columbia, Dan is a, a wide receiver, and then became a running back, and uh, John Robinson loves him. Yeah here's a guy I think his number in college was 88 and uh, finally ended up uh, running the ball so much uh, uh, from from the line of scrimmage rather than just the receiver. And it's strictly because they saw what this kid did with the ball after he caught it and you're right as it stands right now you have to think that Robert Del Pino instead of Gaston Green and Cleveland Gary is really the guy that's the back of the future for the Rams. Second down and seven Everett on a roll going deep and Anderson tries to and does get the flag as he comes back and makes contact with Pollard. Well that's how often you see that the ball gets hung up the ball is coming down probably 10 yards short of where either one of the guys thought it was going to be and it's the receiver because he's looking back has the ability to make the play. Number 26 defense first and 10. And Daryl Pollard is the player caught in no man's land. Let's take a look at it. It's Pollard that's going to have to try to make the adjustment back on Anderson. See now Anderson's looking back. He sees the ball. 
Pollard has no idea where the ball is. And Pollard never turns around. That is interference all the way. That will bring the flag every single time. If you're a defensive back and you have lost the ball, you're in jeopardy. And held up, I suspect, very much by the wind as the ball floated down at the 22-yard line. After what turns out to be a 42-yard penalty, Greg Bell takes it to about the 19. It will be second and seven, and Keenan Turner gets credit for that tackle. I mean, you really, you really have to feel for Daryl Pollard. He's victimized uh, on an interference call on just a terribly thrown ball. And he has to be thinking about the rest of the game, too, Dan, because they have decided that Daryl Pollard is the man they can go deep on. You see it often in pro football, but Daryl Pollard knows, hey, they picked something up looking at me, and they're going to work yeah. on me tonight. Well, clearly, Don Griffin, Frank, their other corner, is their best cover guy, so you're right. It may be a long night for Pollard. Second and seven. Everett looked right first. Now goes left on an out pattern. The catch is made at the six-yard line by Aaron Cox. One of the big heroes last week, catching the winning touchdown pass in the game against Dallas, Don Griffin, the other corner, covering on that play, first and goal. Let's take a look at Cox. We talk about Ellard, Ron Brown, Willie Anderson, that this is Aaron Cox in his second year out of UCLA. Puts a good move on Griffin, as Dan just pointed out, the best defensive back, and the key again was Jim Everett. He delivered that ball just as the break was being made. Griffin had good position. You couldn't want better position. It was a perfect pass and a perfect cut on the part of Cox. Cox and Anderson both to the left with Cox now coming in motion to the right on first down. Del Pino to the four, stopped by Jim Burton, the nose tackle. The 49ers, of course, minus Michael Carter on injured reserve foot injury. And also Pete Kugler is hurt. He's the other nose tackle. He is on the inactive list tonight, so it's Burt backed up by Roman Pucci. Interesting that Kugler went on that inactive list because of a bad back, and we know that Jim Burt has a bad back. We flew back to New York when he had his baby a couple of weeks ago, his wife Colleen, and uh, he, he could already get on the plane, already get off the plane. And yet he's out there starting tonight for Kugler, who has a bad back for the 49ers. Starting, starting for the first time in exactly a year. Second down and goal. That's Ellard. Back from a strained hamstring in motion. And Everett firing, and the catch is made by Damone Johnson for a touchdown. And I don't know how Don Griffin could have had any better coverage on Damone Johnson unless he was going to crawl inside his jersey. Big man, 6'4 and 250. He is tough to cover, at least from behind. And Everett, give Everett again credit. He just drilled it right in there. Well, Griffin says, well, this, is, this game is really starting out great. Watch the coverage by Don Griffin. It is just a perfectly thrown ball. And Damone Johnson reaches away from his body and makes a nice catch. Lancer's extra point is good. The Rams have had the ball twice. They have marched down the field twice, and they lead 14 to nothing. Not bad to have a big man, 6'4", 250, when you're throwing straight ahead from the pocket into the end zone. Griffin, no way could get around him. Good effort by Damone Johnson again. Another fine pass from Jim Everett. Jim Everett uh, appears to be saying, Joe who? Uh-huh. <laughs> He'll find out. Far from over. Jim Everett led the league in touchdown passes in 1988, and he is now leading the league again. Uh, that last one surpassing Don Mikowski of Green Bay for the... The lead, the lead 14 points. It's blowing, it's blowing like candlestick park up here. The kick is taken at the nine yard line, and that's Terrence Flagler running it back out to the 25. So the Rams come out flying, leading by a score of 14 to nothing. But uh, as we all know, Joe Montana has led a, a few comebacks in his career, and in fact, uh, we can think of a couple in recent times on Monday Night Football. Yeah, but I can re I can recall a game at the end of last year. It didn't mean that much to the 49ers. They clinched everything, but uh, the Rams just killed them up at Candlestick Park. They beat them 38 to 16, and this is taking on those kinds of dimensions. If we stick around, we're about to blow out of here, by the way. He's lucky he's not throwing the ball from where we are up here. From the 25-yard line, Montana goes to the air and has it picked off at the 30-yard line by Irvin, and he takes it back to the 10-yard line. Leroy Irvin, and it's an amazing thing he is playing against the 49ers for the 19th time in his career, and that's the first pass he has ever intercepted against San Francisco. And it goes for a touchdown if Joe Montana doesn't come over and make the tackle. 
There it is, Al. His first interception. And it's Joe Montana that's forced to come over and clean up his own mess. He has to make the tackle on Leroy Irvin and prevent a touchdown. But that's exactly what he does do. And here comes Irvin. Steps right in front of the intended receiver. That was Jerry Rice. And there's Montana. And for a guy with sore ribs, Joe Montana sacrificing himself for his team. Boy, and that's, you know, let's not underestimate Joe Montana. That's instinct, but a good tackle. First and goal, the nose of the ball was on the 10 yard line, meaning they cannot pick up a first down with that crossing the goal line for the touchdown as Delpino picks up two. That's only Montana's sixth interception of the season to go with 22 touchdown passes. There's Montana talking to Rice, and you know, it appears to be telling Rice they're in this kind of defense. Jerry, you probably should have done this. He is perhaps putting it a little more strongly than that, but certainly there was something missing between the two of them on that play. Second and goal. Holahan in motion. Here's Bell to the outside, and nowhere to go. Wrapped up by 349ers. Romanowski among them, and Michael Walter as well. It'll be third down and goal. That was an all-out blitz that time by the 49ers. You saw Ronnie Lott right up there on the line of scrimmage. Michael Walter, the linebacker, also came up. I, there's no doubt that the 40, 49ers right now, down 14 points, are in a, a state of desperation. Again, pressed back against their own goal line. This is a good 49er team. But it is not any safe assumption that they're going to come roaring back from a 21 nothing deficit. And that's what it would be if the Rams push it across the goal line here. Third and goal for the Rams. Everett throws and it's oh. blocked at the one yard line by Flipper Anderson and he nearly got flipped. He really paid the price on that one in his fourth down. Flipper Anderson lost the ball and then Johnny Jackson unloaded on him. A little high for a receiver if you ever run one of these kind of patterns down there in that traffic you say hey, put it down a little lower for me will you what well, yeah, he should have had but he knew he was getting into heavy traffic yeah they'd like to have it lower but this is hardly a perfect world that was a very that was a catchable ball 25 yard field goal attempt pull hand holding for Mike Lansford and so Lansford here adds a field goal to his two extra points the Rams have scored on all three of their drives and Al, it was Joe Montana who kept it from being a touchdown. And the defense gets off with just three. But without that tackle, they take it in for six. Leroy Irvin was shaken up on that Montana tackle after his interception put the Rams in position to capitalize for a field goal and they lead 17-0. Lansford with only two touchbacks in over 70 kickoffs this season. This one comes down to the five where Terrence Flagler comes back out past the 30, and this is just what the 49ers need. Down by 17, a good one back to set him up near midfield. Go back to the Irvin tackle here. Watch Leroy Irvin spin up and then land right on the back of his head and his neck. He gets up and starts to make it off, but watch him go down. Fred Strickland is right there with him, but Leroy says, hey, wait a minute. The celebrations are fine, but uh, I just don't have it. Here it is from another angle. Joe Montana puts the helmet and the shoulder right in there. And again, Leroy landing right on his head in the back of his neck. But we've been told that he will be back. From the 45-yard line, Montana throws off the fingertips of Tom Rathman. Second down and 10. Again, a catchable ball by the usually sure-handed Rathman leading receiver out of the backfield. Surprising enough for the 49ers over Roger Craig. He's caught 66 balls out of the backfield. He's caught more passes out of the backfield than anyone in the NFL. We'll use him, of course, underneath Rice and Taylor. And a very high percentage type of pass and hope that a Rathman or Craig can break it for a big win and get the first down when they double up on the outside receivers Rice and Taylor and possibly before the end of this season certainly next year Craig will become the all time leader in receptions among running backs as Taylor takes this Montana throw and Taylor with a nice move picks up a first down getting into Ram territory and bumped out of bounds by Vince Newsom at the 44 yard line 11 yard game Clifford Hicks hurt himself coming up and trying to make the tackle on John Taylor you know he missed last week's game against Dallas Hicks did he was starting over at that right cornerback 
And Leroy Irvin started tonight. Leroy Irvin, you saw a moment ago, went out, and they are working on the knee, and that's an injury that he had last week that caused him to miss last week's game. And he, he just, had just come into the game to replace Leroy Irvin. It looked like he threw that one leg out in front of himself that stopped. He was coming up closing quick, quickly on John Taylor and he threw that leg out in front. You can see he's wearing a brace on the right knee. Here we ought to get a good look at it here. See how he throws the leg out there? Right there, that little bit of indecision. And you can see, boy, that's right where Hicks hurt himself. And he gamely struggles to try to make the tackle, but he did not get back up. Meanwhile, Urban has come back out on the field, and you can see how tenderly he is trying to drive off that. He didn't even get to Taylor. So that knee. Probably should have kept him out of the game. He probably shouldn't have even gone in. And he locks up with Rice at the bottom of your screen from the 44-yard line. Montana looking the other way. Throws, and the catch is made at the 39-yard line by John Taylor. He's out of bounds at the 38. Jerry Gray with the coverage. It'll be second and four. Jerry Gray, a safety in college. Rams made him a cornerback. He's been a great corner. And as you look at Steve Young on the left, sending in the signs to Joe Montana on the right, John Robinson feeling next year Gray's going to go back to safety. He played that in college, didn't he? He was an All-American as a safety. Just a great athlete. He just quietly goes around making Pro Bowls every year. They work on Hicks with Irvin back in the game. Second and four from the 38-yard line. Craig swing to the outside, and Newsom wrestles him down at the 33-yard line after he picks up a first down. Guys, I want to add a thought while you were talking about there with, with Jerry Gray. I, I think back to what John Robinson told us about how the game has changed in his mind, how he used to build his secondary around his corners, thinking that uh, cornerbacks and offensive tackles, John Robinson thought, were the two most valuable members of your team. He said, so much zone nowadays, I, I've, I've shied away from the corners. Your two safeties are now the guys that really make everything happen in your secondary. That's John's thinking and moving Jerry Gray to safety. And you look at the, the young safeties in the league now, the Eric McMillans, the Atwaters, and you can see that trend continuing. First and ten over the middle, and they go to the tight end, Brent Jones, who gets all the way to the 13-yard line. And again, Montana spreading it around, throwing the, the running backs, Taylor and Rice, of course, and when they're covered to the tight end, Jones. And again, high percentage stuff, you do that against the Rams because they lay back there, I said it earlier, in that zone defense, they stay pretty much 85 or 90 percent you throw this kind of a pass you throw it to a Brent Jones hopes he can break a tackle he does gets the first down you throw a little hitch to Rice you throw a, a little slant to Taylor and let them with their own athletic ability turn it into a big play you can't very well go deep against the Rams it's very difficult 49ers five different receivers with 30 or more catches this season first down from the 14 yard line Montana throws Inside the 10, the catch is made. That's Jones again, his 32nd reception of the season. And it will be second down and about three. And you just get the feeling that the 49ers offensively now are starting to get their rhythm. I mean, this is beginning to look like their, their patented offense. Just the, the short strike, little movement by Joe. A couple three-step drops, then we'll have a rollout one way or another. And boy, just bang, bang, bang. You know on the sidelines, Dan, that George Seifert said, okay, we're down 17. Joe's been there before. He knows what it's all about. Let's just stay with what we brought here. We'll get our breaks. They always come a little by little. Rice will break a tackle. Taylor will break one. We'll get a big one out of Craig. Well, Joe Montana changes something. It's either some confusion on the play or personnel, but the 49ers take a timeout. Joe heads to the sidelines. But again, you just you, you can see uh, that they're just operating a little bit differently than they did on the first couple of possessions. Second and three from the seven yard line. After the timeout, Jones in motion. Inside handoff to Craig. He has the first down as he takes it to the two. It'll be first and goal on what figures to be the final play of the first quarter. Kelm makes the tackle. Good call. You've been bringing the ball down the field. The Rams come with a pass rush, anticipating pass once again. You make a little quick trap and you spring Craig for the first down. This is good looking. San Francisco 49er offense. They're back to what they wanted to do at the very outset of the game, and they're far from out of it. Through 14 weeks, the Rams leading the league in scoring in the first period, and tonight they put up 17 after the first 15 minutes of play. And back we come after this message and a word for an ABC station. 
Full moon over Anaheim where it is windy, cool at Anaheim Stadium. Capacity crowd looking on. We start the second quarter. 17 to nothing Rams. But the 49ers have a first and goal at the two. With Jerry Rice in motion. And Montana looking that way for Taylor, who's covered well. It's incomplete. Well, Ray and Stewart covering on the play. That's almost like Ray and Stewart were in the 49er huddle. When you talk about two guys that saw that play coming all the way. And Joe Montana is semi lucky that that ball wasn't intercepted. Frank, I, I know that that was a, a one receiver pattern, and that's the way it's going the whole way, but ooh, that, uh, that, that almost was an INT. I mean, they had a little quick cross there looking for a bit of a screen. Rice crossing in front of Taylor. They didn't get a good coverage, and that could have been a long run for the Rams. Tight set on second and goal. Jamie Williams just activated in walls, double tight ends, and Rathman gets dragged down from behind by Kevin Green, the Rams sack specialist, making the tackle and setting up a third and goal inside the two. Rams into the night's game, sixth against the rush. That's pretty good in the entire league. 23rd against the pass, and the 49ers have come down for the first and goal to go inside the five, and they've tried to run the ball twice. And there's Kevin Green, number 91, the winner of the Hulk Hogan look-alike contest. <laughs> One of the finest pass rushers in the game, a good all-around outside linebacker. Third and goal, ball spotted exactly at the two. Again, double tight end setup, play fake by Montana. Under pressure from Walker, has to throw it away. Boy, Jerry Rice is really upset. He charges the referee right after the play. <laughs> you talk about some confusion. And the 49ers electing to go for a field goal, or at least to set up as if they're attempting a field goal. But keep in mind that the holder, Helton, on occasion has put it in the air, though we would not suspect under these circumstances with a swirling win. Big field goal yesterday in the Philadelphia game. Of course, they have a quarterback holding there. Cavanaugh who makes part of puts it down, and Cooper boots it through. And the 49ers settle for three. But a, a victory of sorts for the Rams, who are able to hold them after a first and goal at the two-yard line. Well, the intent of the last play, Joe Montana threw the ball where he thought Jerry Rice was going to be. They were going to bring Rice all the way across the formation. Here's Jerry. He's lined up right here as a wingback. This is Harris Barton. He's going to drop back into pass coverage. I mean, pass defense, and they're going to run right into another, and Jerry just gets lost. And Joe Montana, thinking he's going to have Rice in the opposite flat. Look at that. Jerry Rice just can't get through his own team. And Montana forced to just throw the ball away. That's Sometimes down on the goal line, you can outthink yourself. Sometimes straight ahead football is the best way to get it across the goal line. A little too much finesse here for the 49ers right. and Jerry Rice. Being buffeted all around the backfield. First, it's a 280 pound Barton he collides with, and then the running back that almost took his head off. He never does get hit by a ram. <laughs> Joe's going, I, hey, it sure looked good when we worked it on Friday. Did we draw that up that way? <laughs> I'll guarantee you that play was a touchdown every time they ran it during practice this week. That was a can't-miss touchdown. You know, that's uh, that's why coaches have either gray hair or no hair. There's the brain dust. Yeah, they're all on the phone. Joe's got them all on the line. Nobody wants to take credit for drawing that one up now. They were fighting. They were fighting for it on Thursday and Friday, but nobody's claiming it today. You saw Montana's numbers against the Rams in this stadium. Montana is unbeaten as a starter at Anaheim Stadium. He is 7 and 0. Oh. Now that's going to be tested tonight. 17 to 3, the Rams on top. Rams have had the ball three times, two touchdown drives, and then another drive that resulted in a field goal. Brown and Del Pino are back. Brown to the right of your screen as Kofor gets set to put it in the air. Kicking into the swirling wind. And angling it. Del Pino from the three out to the 23 yard line. From the 23 yard line. Looker Anderson is the man in motion. Everett doesn't run very much, but takes the opportunity here to pick up about nine, stepping out of bounds 
at the 32 yard line and Greg Bell helped pave the way with a block on Darrell Pollard. Report on Hicks who came out earlier. Uh, they're working on his knee brace which needed some readjustment but he's fine and can return. Glowing words for quarterback Jim Everett from not only John Robinson who said he thought he had really gone through that plateau that all great quarterbacks go through when they are so confident they get the interception they want to get back out on the field and also great glowing words from George Seifert the 49er coach second and two Bell takes the swing pass and then Walter makes the tackle out of the 29 yard line Matt Millen is also there as well the, the former Raider that's a loss of about two on the play and will make it third down and four it's interesting that George Seifert said almost the same thing John Robinson said about quarterback Jim Everett the maturity the fact that he is a leader now on the football field he just takes charge of everything I think the first time we talked to him now about three years ago and he's almost like a, a valley girl I mean <laughs> he was flipping his girls he was happy to be here but he has really taken over this football team a valley boy oh, a valley boy whatever you want I'm Mondo 49ers jumping and then Haley gets into it Gordon McCarter the referee almost uh, ended up on the turf there's Panky and Jackie Slater and Haley Pierce Holt if it's against the 49ers, it's a first down, start, but it's not. Tom Newberry. And let's get up close and personal with Charles Haley. Guy's got nine and a half sacks already this year, and of course he anticipates things after the quick start, and uh, Buford McGee takes a little bit of a an interest in Haley spinning his quarterback around. It's, you know, it's a sign of a of good football teams they always protect their quarterback you shove my quarterback and somebody's going to be in your face but uh, no harm done on either side third and nine from the 24 yard line Everett firing and Ellard at the 46 yard line can't make the catch broken up by Don Griffin and what a play by Griffin I mean that's just wonderful anticipation on the ball cutting underneath your man just at the last minute and stretching out the right hand to get it out there by the ball we talked earlier about what kind of a cover guy Griffin is, and he showed it there. Dale Hatcher to punt. John Taylor sets up at his own 35-yard line to accept the kick. 12.45 to go in the half. Good kick. Taylor at the 27-yard line escapes the first would-be tackler, turns the corner, out past the 40, and run out of bounds finally at the 47, and a flag goes down. Well back upfield. In fact, two flags go down as Hatcher went down, and it's against San Francisco. Hatcher was hit late as Taylor was stepping out of bounds. The flag coming real late. Holding number 56, receiving team during the return. Ten yard penalty for the dead ball spot. First down. Steve Hendrickson, rookie from California flag for the infraction so instead of having it at the 47 yard line oh boy does that hurt yep 49ers are pushed back to the 37 yard line and Lynn Stiles the special teams coach are having his say <laughs> Robinson wanted to make sure the officials saw the infraction <laughs> another thing as well from the 37 yard line here's Roger Craig and Craig is taken down at the line of scrimmage couldn't get around the corner and Jerry Gray is there to, to stop you know some people think Craig may have lost a step that uh, he is coming up with some diminishing returns of sort this year but when you look at him there it is yards from scrimmage that means rushing and receiving and there it is through his career coming into the season 99.4 this year 99.2. Yeah, but there's no denying that uh, there's been some compensation there. More receiving yards and less rushing. This is not the Roger Craig you've grown accustomed to seeing pounding it up in there over the years. Second down and nine is Montana. Keeps it. Steps out of bounds at the 40. He picks up about two on the play. One out by Fred Strickland, and it will be third down and seven. 
Don't Anna like Ram zone defense just collapsed on the receivers for Montana. He had three right in the same area, and they just collapsed on it. He had no place to put it. Joe not really showing any ill effects of having the bad ribs. He received a pain-killing injection right before the start of the game, and it has not appeared to have hindered his motion, his movement at all. He's throwing the ball with velocity and accuracy, and as we can see, even making open field tackles and running with the ball. Third down and seven from the 40. Montana over the middle, and the catch is made at the 47. This is going to be very close. That's Jones's third reception. And if they spot it right on the 47, he'll have the first down. It appears from here that he does, and they're going to bring in the chains. Well, he called it very close. Brent Jones had about a half a yard on it, but then he came back into the ball as Joe was a little late getting it to him, and it's going to be very close. Well, he was right on the 47, but he got a good spot with the ball being placed beyond the 47. Real good spot. <laughs> he, uh, he got a very yeah. generous spot. Uh huh. Enough for the first down. It yeah. looked like he was straddling the 47, and if anything, he was to the inside. Let's take a look at it. Watch the 47 yard line. Let's go ahead and roll this one, guys, and then we'll stop it when he gets right at the 47. Okay, here we are, right here. Take a look at that. The ball is right on the 47, oh, and he yeah. takes a step back to the inside when Jerry Gray uh -huh. made the hit. Good spot. Meanwhile, a fumble, and it's recovered. It's <laughs> snatched out of the air by Montana. Back at the 46-yard line, he and Roger Craig with the errant handoff. Now, first of all, I want to come to the aid of the officials there. I mean, imagine that, that call is being made at lightning speed. That's being made at, at, at regulation time, not slow-mo like we're doing it, but still a, a fortunate spot for the 49ers, and... This is just errant ball handling. Rathman wasn't expecting it, and Joe tried to give it to him. Joe tried to give it to him. <laughs> that ball should have gone to Craig. Both Craig and Rathman thought Craig should have had it. Yeah. Second and 11, Craig goes in motion. Look out. And then under pressure from Green, a flag goes down. The ball hangs in the air. The pass was intended. For Rice, Green put the pressure on Montana, and a flag is down in the secondary. And it's against Los Angeles. Holding number 58 defense, five yards, automatic first down. Mel Owens. Yeah, I think the hold is going to be against, it's Brent Jones trying to get off. Let's take a look at the rush. Kevin Green comes in totally unblocked, and boy, that's putting your quarterback in a tough situation to turn that guy loose. Mel Owens is a linebacker right here. Watch him. He's not going to allow Brent Jones to get his release off the line of scrimmage. Jones tries to go to the inside. Owens wraps him up, forces him to do a 180 and spin back out of it, and that drew the hole. From the Rams, 48, a first down, and Craig is inside the 40, rammed out of bounds by Newsom after a gain of 11. First down. These, uh, these guys came to play tonight. Mm -hmm. They came to hit. <laughs> this is a, bring an extra chin strap to this party. Oh, yeah. Craig lined up with that first down marker and knew where he had to get, and he paid the price at the end because Vince Newsom, like we talked about earlier, most of the safeties around the league are really your heavy tacklers. Here comes Newsom like a rocket. Boy, that's Craig knew exactly where he had to go for the first down, and he got it. I like to see that. A good, clean hit inbound. First down from the 37-yard line. Here's Craig, and he can't get out of the backfield, and that's Green, Kevin Green, in his fifth year out of Auburn, all over the field. We've seen Roger Craig a couple times tonight with some indecision. He he doesn't see anything that he likes in the middle of the hole, in the middle between the tackles. Tries to make that move to the inside, to the outside rather. Now keep in mind, this is a defense that's predominantly made up of linebackers. So they have well above average team speed. And Roger Craig or any back for the 49ers, if he's confused in the middle, if he's going to try to get outside, he's not going to get there. These guys are too fast. Second and 13 from the 40. Taylor in motion. Great protection from Montana. Two pump fakes, and then he hits Rackman, and he's tackled at the 33-yard line. Larry Kilm makes the hit. It will be third down and six. Steve Young on the sidelines getting the plays and he'll be signaling them in. He had a great day last week against Atlanta. 
coming into the ball game. Steve Young with 11 of 12 to the 49ers victory. It's the second time he came in in relief of Montana in a game and went 11 for 12. He did it against New England as well in late October. Oh. Luxurious position to be in for a football team with a Montana and a Young. Third and six in the 33-yard line. Under pressure, Montana sacked at the 38-yard line. Somehow slipping through Alvin Wright. Boy, that's where the offensive line hangs their head in shame. The Rams only send three defensive linemen, only three pass rushers. That means everybody is doubled up. That's why I said somehow slipping through. Yep, there's Alvin Wright right there, and he's going to beat two guys to get to the quarterback. But when you only send three people after the quarterback, and you end up with a trap where the quarterback doesn't even have a chance to set up, that's as bad as it gets up front. Barry Helton kicking from the 50-yard line. And he gets a good 49er bounce as they try to down it inside the five and can't. Michael Walter got down there but couldn't control it. And thus it is a touchback instead of pinning the Rams inside the five-yard line. That for a special teams player is like a touchdown pass that's dropped, like a long run that you score on, you don't get. That means a lot to them. He was so close, right in the hands, bobbled it. No question he should have had it, but it'll come back out to the 20 for the Rams. And then he realized, oh my gosh, it's Monday night. <laughs> well, let's see, my Monday night memory was uh, 1986. New York Giants, San Francisco 49ers, Candlestick Park. It was a real big game for us. I remember uh, the 49ers went in halftime leading 17-0. We were dancing on the sidelines. That was it. We are going to go to the Super Bowl that year. They came out, scored 21 points in about five minutes. Before the touchdown, what a turnaround. That was definitely the Giants' year. Remember that night? Huey came up and watched that game from the booth. He yeah. almost jumped out of it. Well, you saw the Robinson catch. That was the night Bavaro also got him uh, going. With a tremendous play where he dragged about 67 49ers to 15 yards as Everett goes to the air on first down. The catch is made, a tremendous catch by Flipper Anderson. The play is dead at the 42-yard line. Somehow getting it away from Pollard. And again, he had to come back for it. Flipper Anderson. We talked about the advantage of being on the outside, getting a little bit of the edge. Even if the ball is underthrown, the receiver knows where it is as the defender, in this case Pollard, tries to play catch up. And again, Flipper Anderson with 4-4-2 speed. Pollard puts it into a sprint trying to catch him and then he just loses all together and Anderson concentrates on the ball and comes down with it but you notice the change in technique by Pollard at least he turned around and tried to play the ball from the 42 yard line little swing pass off the hand of Bell will be second and ten Have a look at this catch flipper Anderson remember he's the guy two weeks ago in New Orleans because Henry Ellard was hurt strain hamstring had a chance to catch 15 for an astonishing 336 yards. A magical night for a receiver, and how he came down with that ball, I don't know, because it appeared as though it grazed the helmet of Pollard. We saw it in slow motion, but when that is an actual speed, that ball, just any deviation, it would make it almost impossible to catch, and Anderson comes down with it. He's got two tonight for 72 yards, and look at that average. It's over a quarter of the field every time he catches the ball. And here he is on an end around. Flipper Anderson, but Ronnie Lott says, Hey, wait a second. Come back to real life, pal. Oh, Ronnie Lott zeroed in on Anderson all the way. He was at midfield. He picked up Anderson when he left his position on the left side of the field and followed him all the way, and he does not miss the tackles. And there he is, Anderson, a, a, coming from the left side all the way around. The Trojan will never miss uh, an opportunity to take an extra never. shot at a Bruin either. Not if you can get them. Third down, 11 from the 43-yard line. Everett going to the 25-yard line, and it's Henry Ellard. 
who's been inactive the last two weeks with that strained hamstring back in the lineup and making the catch for a first down. I'll tell you, though, if your offensive line gives you that much time, Dan Deardorff could throw that pass. Ellard set back there, could have wound up the watch, could have done anything he wanted until he found an open receiver. And here is Ellard. Now he takes a long route downfield, then breaks it in. Now this is taking a lot of time, and that offensive line is giving Everett all the time he needed. Ellard, of course, the Travelers' Man of the Year for these Los Angeles Rams for not only his efforts on the field, but often the big Travelers' Man of the Year in the NFL will be announced at the Super Bowl. Ellard Lott here tonight. On first and ten, it's a five-yard pickup for Bell. Chet Brooks makes the tackle. Rams on top, 17-3, with six and a half minutes to go in the first half. And right now, I think it is a case. Frank just touched upon the offensive line of the Rams, but... They're controlling the line of scrimmage. If one group is dominating this game right now, and we've seen the acrobatics of the receivers and the quarterbacks throwing the ball. But if there's going to be a difference as this game wears on right now, the advantage has to go to the big guys in blue for John Robinson's Rams. His talented offensive line is controlling the line of scrimmage. Cox in motion from the 21 yard line on first down. It is Bell or on second down and five. I beg your pardon. He picks up three. Taking to the 18 yard line. Walter in on the tackle. And it will be third down and roughly two. You know, we touched on it earlier, Dan, but with an offensive line that talented, we've watched them tonight. We raved about their pass protection, but they have totally lost their running game over the past eight or ten games. And that, of course, I think concerns Robinson more than anything about this team because when you go to the playoffs, you've got to be able to run the ball as well as throw the ball. So there's some numbers to show just exactly that. In the first three games, 417 yards the last 10 games 410 yards now something has gone awry somewhere well I don't know that you put it all on the offensive line your points well made but I think a lot of it's Greg Bell he doesn't seem to be running with a lot of authority third and a long one and it shouldn't matter they pick up the first down anyway the 49ers had jumped as Buford McGee takes the ball inside the 10 yard line and yet you put that question to John Robinson is it Bell he'll say no it's he just doesn't know the answer to it Number 54, defense, first down, goal to go. He really meant to say number 64. It's Jim Burt. There he is to the left of your screen in the white jersey. Boy, he just anticipates the snap count, and he's clear across the ball down on all fours. But again, just look at the explosion by the Ram offensive line. White shirts all down on the ground, out of the play. First and goal. Bell on a sweep, puts his head down and takes it to the five-yard line. Ronnie Lott and Michael Walter converging on the tackle. 4.45 to go in the first half. Seeing Bird jump off sides there a moment ago. Most of those tackles that they've been around for a while, they try to pick up the little idiosyncrasies of the center. They'll look for a little finger, a little twitch, any kind of a thing to get a jump. And Jim Bird is one of the best around at doing that. He's not the biggest and the strongest that's been around for a while, but he gets the most out of a body that's been... Pretty well battered over the nine years that he's been playing this game, but he's still doing it tonight, replacing Pete Kugler. Second down goal from the five-yard line. Colahan stays in the block. Everett throws, and Eller drops the ball at the three-yard line. Tim McKayer covering on the play. Third down coming up. As sure-handed as Ellard is, I still think he was trying to maybe think end zone before he actually came up with the football and lost the pass that he certainly should have caught. Jim Everett did everything to catch it for him, hit him perfectly there, and Ellard was already beginning to spin and think for the corner, think about the corner of the end zone. But when you're controlling it up front, why throw the ball? I think the Rams are more than capable of just stuffing it in on the ground. Third down and goal, four wide receivers in this set, and they keep it on the ground. They give it to McGee, and McGee gets only to the three-yard line. Walter and Turner in on the tackle. And so the Rams send the field goal unit out with Lansford. Little chip shot coming up here. Interesting, the man who's calling these plays, Ernie Zampezi, came from the San Diego Chargers, tooted under Don Coriel. He didn't think much about the run either. He liked to throw the football to the Rams, and gradually, with the development of Jim Everett, they've got away from the run. Perhaps that's part of the problem in being able to run the football. They just like to throw the football now. Mike McDonald to snap. He Holahan to hold, a 21-yard attempt. Lansford and a fake, and Holahan, who is a H-back, tight end by trade, tries to dive into the end zone, but can't get there. And what a play at the one-yard line to stop him from going in. 
Walter was there, and Tim McKayer as well. And now, it was a goal-to-go -go situation. One of the officials pointing toward the chains, but that's not relevant here. It was goal to go. They failed to make it. First down the other way. Exactly. One yeah. of the officials pointed toward the chains as they forgotten that it was goal to go. Yeah, they were confused because the, the original line of scrimmage was right at the 10 yard line. So it was a, a goal to go situation all the way. You can't blame Pete Holahan, though. Look at the effort. But give credit where credit is due. Tim McKire, number 22, undercuts him. Michael Walter finishes it up. The 49ers hold. In Anaheim, Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deardorff, the 49ers, starting from the one-yard line. And, boy, I tell you, there's been more miscommunication between Montana and Rice tonight than there's been all season. That's twice I'm certain that Montana had expected something totally different from Rice. Follow him back to the huddle, and perhaps we'll see a little exchange there. You don't see that very often. Let's take a look again. Montana looks left and he turns around and he just fires and Rice is sprinting upfield not even looking back. Well you know the way passes are called these days they are all done by sight adjustment. The quarterback and the receiver must see the same thing and agree on it and alter their throw and route accordingly. Misfire that time. Craig is in motion on second and ten and Montana tries to buy some space and does as he hits the tight end Brent Jones his fourth catch of the game out to the eight yard line it'll be third and three Mel Owens with the coverage Jones has already been a busy tight end tonight but as you can see it was Mel Owens the linebacker who was assigned to cover Jones he has had nothing but linebackers with him all evening he's been open he's caught several passes already and he's going to catch more and staying in that zone defense and relying on, on linebackers to cover the tight end third down and a long two from just outside the eight and Montana throws in wide open and 20 yard line is Taylor with the defensive back falling down Newman can't make the tackle Taylor is inside the 30 inside the 20 inside the 10 touchdown San Francisco 92 yards <laughs> What a great read by Joe Montana. The Rams rolled in a complete zone. They rolled up on the right side of the 49ers and left individual coverage in a zone defense. The only man on the field who would get individual coverage. And here it is. Clifford Hicks has already gone out of the game with a sore knee. That's man for man on Taylor, one of the great broken field runners in the game today. But it was Montana who read the roll. Taylor read it with him. And just like that, six points. Yeah, but did you, did, you, did you notice the slip at the very beginning of the play? Hicks slips and falls down. He doesn't get any sort of a shot on Taylor whatsoever. And he's in no position to chase the play. And he's only in position to be on the field because Irvin, they tell us now, has a slight concussion. So he goes out again. Hicks comes in, down he goes, and there goes Taylor for 92. Seven point LA lead. This has the makings of a wild one, a typical Ram 49er game. It's 17 to 10 Los Angeles. The kick is taken by Ron Brown at the three yard line, and back he comes to the 17. And let's go back and take a peek at the touchdown again. Again, the key at the beginning was the slip by Clifford Hicks. Frank talked about him rolling up in the man coverage up here, but watch him slip once and then he slips again when he tries to get up. There he takes his shot on Taylor. Down he goes. He slips again trying to get up. And now it's it's left just to uh, the rest of the secondary. Anthony Newman is in a chase position. But look at Jerry Rice downfield on Jerry Gray allowing John Taylor to get in. Good downfield blocking and help from your partner. Rice aiding Taylor. But again, the key, the slip by Hick. From the 17-yard line. On a delay, it's McGee, and he plunges forward, and that extra effort at the end may have netted him a first down as we come upon the two-minute warning. And Everett will go to the bench, talk things over there as we come to the two-minute warning, and when we come back, the Rams will have all of their timeouts remaining. 
first and 10 at the 27 yard line. 17 to 10, Rams in Anaheim. Here comes Montana to guide the Niners. From the 30 as we take a look at the first half statistics. Fairly even the big play, of course, a 92-yard touchdown pass Montana to Taylor. That would make quite a discrepancy in total yards and take that one away. But otherwise, fairly even. But a tale of two quarters, the first mm -hmm. quarter mm -hmm. belonging exclusively to Los Angeles, and the second quarter belonging to the 49ers. Usually the reverse with the 49ers, isn't it? Third quarter begins with a pass to Taylor, who gets dislodged from the ball. And has to recover it. It was a live ball, and he recovers it at the 27-yard line. Jerry Gray saying, how do you do? <laughs> well, they talk about uh, one of the best assets a cornerback can have is his ability to close a distance in a hurry. And this is how you close to the football. You realize your guy's just running a little hitch, and that is how it's done. No hesitation, no sliding down around the legs. It's called putting the top of your helmet right in the sternum. And right now it looks like we're going to have a little replay to determine whether or not that was a catch. Right. The only question is uh, if it was an incompletion, it would work to the 49ers benefit because it would be second and 10. On the field, we rule completed pass. The play is being reviewed. And that is outstanding work with the field microphone mm -hmm. by our referee Gordon McCarter. Mm -hmm. That's the way to tell everybody. That's that's a great job, Gordon. Further review has determined the pass is incomplete. No possession. Second down at the previous spot. So a reversal. They rule that it was a an incomplete pass. And as Al said, that definitely works to the 49ers benefit. And our replay official tonight is Chuck Heberling, one of the great NFL referees who's retired from actively working on the field and now does it from the booth. A good man to have in that position. You calling him that means he never called you for holding. No, not that I can remember because if, if I did, I wouldn't have said If he would have, I wouldn't have said that. I know it. Second and 10 from the 30 yard line. Montana fires over the middle into a lot of traffic and is lucky it wasn't picked off. Mike Wilson was the intended receiver, a trio of Rams, including Michael Stewart out of Bakersfield. Yeah, in another play. Bakersfield High School driller. Of, they won the San Joaquin Valley Championship, my high school. Going 10 and 0, and Wilson, of course, a great star. Let's take a look at Mike Wilson, and picked up by Michael Stewart, who picked him up across the middle. But Montana, I don't think, sees the other defender coming into the play, and that was almost picked off as linebacker Fred Strickland was also there. Third and 10 now from the 30-yard line. Montana buying time, looking downfield, and then has to throw it out of bounds again. Wilson was the intended receiver and he couldn't get loose and the Rams hold the 49ers on the first series and Barry Hilton comes in to kick. John Robinson again if his team can win tonight they'd be a game back and they have two relatively easy games upcoming against the Patriots and the Jets. The 49ers go home against Buffalo and Chicago and again if they were to finish the season tied assuming the Rams win tonight tied in the standings. The Rams win the tiebreaker because they would have beaten San Francisco both times. The Buffalo, of course, are coming in scratching their tied in the AFC East with Miami. Helton under pressure gets it off. Fielded at the 28-yard line by Daryl Henley. And he gets it back out to the 43-yard line. Clifford Hicks was the man who put the pressure on and nearly came in for the block. So the Rams, as you take another look at how close Hicks comes, take over at their own 43-yard line. Ah, nice little artsy, craftsy shot. Our director, uh, Craig Jell, producer Ken Wolf, and the gang here in Anaheim on a windy night. As the Rams take over at their own 44-yard line. Tim Everett, the quarterback. Greg Bell is the sole running back in this set. They send Bell out into the pattern along with everybody else, and Everett under duress gets it away, complete to Holahan, who takes a real pop from Ronnie Lott, but holds on to the ball, and he first down. 
Kevin Fagan that time came in to apply the pressure on Everett. An incredulous Ronnie Lott who cannot believe that he hit someone that hard and didn't separate them from the football. And again, the maturity of Jim Everett visible once again. Now here comes Holahan, who was with Ernie Zampezi with the San Diego Chargers. Good receiver down there. One year caught over 50 passes. He'll hold on to it for you. But again, Jim Everett scrambling around in the pocket, maintaining his cool, and fires a complete. Here's Bell on first down, taking it to the 40-yard line. He gets tripped up by Kevin Fagan after a pickup of about four. It'll be second and six. Again, the 49ers banged up that defensive line. Michael Carter out. And again tonight, Pete Kugler is out. So it's Bird in the middle. Fagan is holding the defensive end. 49ers don't talk a whole lot about it, but they've lost a lot of players over this season. They had Ronnie Lott out for five weeks. Michael Carter, you mentioned Tina Turner was gone for a while. Jim Farnworth is still gone. And, of course, we've already told you about the great safety, Jeff Fuller. So they've been hurt. Second and six with Jamone Johnson in motion. And Everett throwing. Great catch by Holahan at the 25-yard line. Somehow found the seam and amongst the trio of 49ers, Romanowski, Brooks, and Millen all covering on the play. To a quarterback like Jim Everett, to have someone like a Pete Holahan, someone who, who understands the finesse of the passing game and who can make the side adjustment in sync with you, what an asset to a quarterback. And that's all this is. This is Holahan finding that bubble, that soft spot in that zone, and turning back and giving his quarterback a big target. And the Millen's game's being delayed a little bit because we've got a 49er down on the field. It is Matt Millen, he and Brooks colliding on the coverage and the one time Raider who was uh, waived by the Raiders and then uh, spent about a week at home was contacted by a number of clubs like the San Francisco offer best and with the injury to Jim Fonhorst is now in a starting role and he's getting up and ever delivering that pass to Holland in a crowd of 49ers one of them being Millen and I think it was his own man coming in Chet Brooks that might have caught him on the top of the head. And it looked as though Millen was trying to get his numbers back and say, look, I can stay in this game. I, I think I'm in Los Angeles. Am I not? Well, Matt Millen may not have known where he was before he got hit. So that's not memory loss may not be that big a problem to Matt. He has to come out for at least one play. Keith DeLong, their number one draft choice, who's been sparingly used out of Tennessee, is in to Stellum. First down from the 25, and Bell goes nowhere, wrapped up by Michael Walter. At the line of scrimmage, second and ten. But I think that's something the Rams have got to continue to do offensively, and that's run the football. They have got to get back to where they were in the first half, and that was controlling the line of scrimmage. That time they attempt to run behind Jackie Slater, number 78, one of the great offensive linemen in the National Football League. And that pretty well tells you how the Rams go. And Jim Everett is having a good night passing the ball, averaging more than seven. They're undefeated. And he's a couple yards above that average so far. Averaging 9.3 for pass attempt. And he'll pick up a little bit more than that on a pass to Buford McGee for a first down to the 12-yard line. Now we talk about offensive coordinator Ernie Zampezi bringing in Holahan, Pete Holahan from the San Diego Chargers, where he worked with Zampezi. He also brought in Buford McGee. In his first year here, the first year of Ernie Zampezi, a good blocker and a good receiver out of the backfield. You had to be a good receiver when you played with Dan Fouts in the Chargers, and Cooper McGee has been quite an asset, as has Pete Olahan. Good possession receivers, both of them. That's McGee's 31st catch of the season. First down, Los Angeles at the 49 or 13. Ten and a half to go, third quarter, LA on top by seven. Anderson is in motion. Over the middle goes Everett. Down. Again, it's McGee catching them back to back. Well, it's safe to say that someone for the 49ers blew their pass coverage. Because the pass rod doesn't get any simpler than what Buford McGee just ran. Just <laughs> looping out of the backfield. I think if we take a look at it, it's fairly safe to say that. <laughs> no, I, didn't go, I didn't go too far out on a limb, did I? <laughs> McGee was totally astonished. No one even knew it. So was Everett. No wonder he didn't dump it at his feet. You don't see that happen very often on a 49er team. Coached by a defensive genius, George Seifert. 
Lansford puts it through, so McGee catches his first two balls of the night in succession. Here's Buford McGee right here, and this is nothing more than a little loop, and everybody is gone. I mean, we're talking about mass vacating by everyone in a white shirt. McGee just loops back underneath. Ooh, that's enough to drive a defensive coordinator turned head coach crazy. He'll bunch him up on the sideline, won't he? Yard line by Terrence Flagler. Out past the 20 and then written down out of the 25 yard line. The tackle is made by Daryl Henley and on the right is Ernie Zampezi, the offensive coordinator, seated uh, to the left of your screen to Corey, the Rams quarterback coach. Talked about Zampezi a moment ago. A coach under Don Coriel with the San Diego Chargers who thought this not only a pass, he also was a Zampini was a former tailback at USC, so the connection exists. John Robinson, a great coach at USC, and he has Zampini, who has totally revolutionized this offense of the Rams. Here are the 49ers. San Francisco has now thrown the ball 15 consecutive plays, and they snap the streak here with Craig on the ground, picking up a first down, lost the ball at the end of the play, but recovers himself out of the 37-yard line after taking another hard hit from Jerry Gray. You would stop and think about the matchup between San Francisco's offense and the Rams defense as something really tailor made for San Francisco. The Rams will fall back into that zone. It's a, it's a hunt and peck type of offense by San Francisco. And yet you have to give these Rams credit. Hard hitting in the secondary. A good example there with the ball being knocked loose. Firm open field tackling. This has just been a brilliant night defensively for Los Angeles. From the 37-yard line, Montana to put it up. Joe throws. Catch is made in a scene by Taylor. He's tackled at the 50-yard line by Jerry Gray. And further than what you said, the Rams came into the night with only three defensive linemen, so they've had to go pretty much and be pretty predictable as to whether they would go with their five defensive linebackers, and they've gone a great deal of the game with it. And when you tell the 49ers what you're going to do, what you have to do, and you can still control them, you're getting a great output on the part of your players. They really had to telegraph what they're going to do defensively. 8.55 to go, third quarter, 24-10 Rams, first and 10 at the 50-yard line. Montana is 17 of 26 to 236 yards. And there's his 18th completion, and that's Taylor's sixth catch. And Taylor tonight, of course, he was the man who was on the receiving end of a 92-yard Touchdown pickup, and he's picked up 141 yards receiving tonight. John Taylor out of Delaware State. And of course, when you play with Jerry Rice uh, forever, you'll be known as the, the other wideout. <laughs> he's a pretty good other wideout. Last week against Atlanta, he picked up 162 yards on five receptions. And tonight, 141. Second and five. Right to motion. Here's Craig behind McIntyre, swinging to the outside, but uh, can't turn the corner. Run out by Leroy Irvin. Short of the first down by six. It's a loss of one, so it'll be third and six from the 46. Again, with those multiple linebackers in there, we talked about it earlier. They are big linebackers. Wiltshire on the right side, 6'3", 245 pounds. Kevin Green, a 250-pounder. But they, they move almost like defensive backs. And that time, they strung that sweep out all the way to the sidelines and held Craig to no gain just by good pursuit and stringing it out. Third and six. Looking for Wilson, and Wilson started to stumble as he cut to the outside at the 30-yard line. And that's the pass well overthrown. Newman with a coverage on the play, and the 49ers have to punt. Wilson and Newman both stumble. They both almost go to the ground, and that's that's clearly what caused Montana. Here we'll get a look at Mike Wilson, number 85, and, and Newman, number 26. There goes Wilson almost to the ground, and of course that cost him a couple of yards upfield that Joe Montana was counting on. Barry held in the punt, both Henley and 
Hicks are back to receive, and Hicks makes a fair catch at the 16-yard line after a 30-yard effort. So we have 8.25 to go in the third quarter. The Rams on top by 14. John Creighton at the helm of the Goodyear Blimp Columbia looking down into Anaheim Stadium, home of the Angels. And among the uh, competition, of course, for the Angels in the American League West, the Kansas City Royals, who announced today Mark Davis, Cy Young Award winner, formerly of San Diego. He'll be pitching out of the Royal Bullpen next year. Four-year deal for Davis, $13 million. Rams with Bell on first down, taking it out to the 19. Four really years. Quickly, could you just repeat that? Yeah. 13 million for four years. Jeez. Daniel. <laughs> Whoa. Folks, let your son grow up to be baseball yeah. players. Forget that football player and cowboy stuff. Mm -hmm. Three and a quarter million dollars a year. And of course, the uh, Kansas City <laughs> already has signed Storm Davis, uh, plucked him from Oakland. Yeah. Yeah. Saberhaven and Gulliza. What's this world Tough coming to when players start making as much as announcers? It's out of control. <laughs> Second and seven. Here's every hitting Holahan out of the 21 yeah. yard line. We know it's coming from the same source. Right. The priorities are totally out of whack. <laughs> Oh man, Romanowski making the tackle on the last play, third down and five. Speaking of contracts, Mr. Everett will be renegotiating a new deal uh -uh. at the end of this year. Well, it's a it's a, a study of contrast between these two teams. Uh, the 49ers, one of the most liberal teams in the league, uh, with their payroll, and the Rams, on the other hand, one of the more fiscally conservative teams in the NFL. Uh, a local writer is taking the calling in the cheap sheep. On third down and five, the catch is made by Aaron Cox out of the 31-yard line, a diving, tumbling catch for a first down. I'll stick to fiscally conservative. It was Mark Wicker. In in you of cheap sheep. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay, all right. Again, the Rams working against Daryl Pollard. If you were with us in the first quarter, and the players continue to slip on the field, you can see it's seen several occasions but again it's Cox working on Pollard Pollard giving a lot of room to speedy receivers of these Rams and they've got a bunch of them from the 30 yard line Everett fires and it's broken up intended for Cox and Don Griffin got a hand on it boy Don Griffin is just playing a, a remarkable game tonight we tagged him early for his ability to cover and he certainly isn't letting anyone down that Enjoys watching good play in the secondary. Here he is working at the bottom of your screen and just floating along. I mean, it's so effortless. But then there's what makes it go. That quick explosion, that burst, and the confidence to go in front. To step in front, he moves right in front of Cox and almost makes an interception. I mean, we're not talking about just breaking up a play. We're almost, we're looking at a guy who almost every time is almost making a play on the ball. Second and 10, here's Del Pino. And Del Pino gets wrapped up by Walter, and then Lott comes in for the finishing touch. A little smooch at the end. Well, it's, it's, it's almost second nature to see that number 42 come flying in from outside your picture and putting the finishing touch on someone. I mean, you know, we've been watching it for so many years here in the National Football League. I watched it here in Los Angeles for a long time at USC, and Lott not only is a good Tackling back, he is now tied with Jimmy Johnson for the team record, the 49er record with 47 interceptions. Multiple Pro Bowler who's back from an ankle injury. Third and ten from the 30. Everett airing it out, but going too deep, intended for Ron Brown, who looked in and then had to look to the outside, and it was over his head anyway. And Don Griffin again covering on the play. And so the Rams will have to kick. And we are in the midst of watching two teams go at one another who have just totally abandoned the running game. I mean, these are two teams that I've just forgotten. The running backs, uh, if you're there to carry the mail, you might as well find something else to do. This is a receiver's game. Dale Hatcher to punt. John Taylor sets up at the San Francisco 30. Five and a half minutes to go, third quarter. 24 to 10, Los Angeles. 49ers set up the return. It's a low kick. Taylor at the 34-yard line. Oh, and <laughs> Newman really took a shot from Johnny Jackson. <laughs> Johnny Jackson will hit you. We saw him earlier. 
almost take Willie Anderson's head off. And again, he's fanning back, trying to set up the picket line. And, and he knew it was coming, but he couldn't avoid Johnny Jackson with a big hit, the rookie from Honolulu. Or rather, Houston. <laughs> well, Joe Montana trying to lead the Niners back from a, a two touchdown deficit. You know, it, it seems like ancient history, but remember in, in 1986, just three years ago, it looked like his career was over. He's come back so many times this year. He's had, uh, what, he's had ribs, he's had uh, an elbow injury that cost him a game. All kinds of problems this year, but he always seems to be out there, and he had to walk in and, and ask to play last week. And they let him go when he says I'm ready from the 39 yard line he hits uh, the tight end Jones and he has a first down to the 50. You know, it's funny that we were talking to Seifert today about Montana when he was hurt he said like everybody else I thought Joe's career was over. I mean there is no such thing as like arthroscopic back surgery. I mean <laughs> back surgery is is serious serious stuff. No such thing as a touch of back surgery. <laughs> right <laughs> as our colleague Keith Jackson might put it. <laughs> Well, I'm kind of wondering uh, about this game in the sense I, the Rams with a two touchdown lead, uh, not trying to run out the, you know, run the ball and use up some of the clock. I think they're giving the 49ers a real window of opportunity. Here's Rice to the 45 yard line, picking up five. Newsom and Strickland in on the tackle. Four minutes and 35 seconds to go in the third quarter. I totally agree, Dan. You keep. Getting the ball to Rice on one side and getting the ball to Taylor on the other side. You, you throw the high percentage stuff and let they're going to break a tackle sooner or later and, and zip it all the way. I mean, that, that front wall of the Rams did not forget how to run block. I mean, that's what you turn to when you've got a nice lead. Instead, it was a couple of passes out, and now the 49ers have it in Ram territory. Second down, five from the 45. Montana gets taken down by Kevin Green. I don't know if that's going to be a sack or not because he may have picked up yardage. In fact, he did. So it goes into the books as a one yard gain on the ground. But Green forcing the issue and making the tackle. Yeah, Green's being run upfield. He's working as Harris Barton. And then at the last moment, Barton not having the privilege of knowing that his quarterback has stepped all the way up into the pocket, in a sense, gives Green that inside. And Green makes the play and ends up tackling Joe Montana. Third and four from the 44. Montana has room, room to roam, has the first down and steps out of bounds at the 30 yard line. It looked as if Bubba Paris may have jumped, but I don't see a flag. Bubba the left tackle let's take another look at it. Bubba Paris is the second player from the top. Mm. Well he he looks like he's right with the snap of the ball. But that's that's cutting it close to the edge for a tackle. Mm -hmm. I mean more often than not you're going to draw the flag in that situation even if you end up moving at the exact moment the ball moves you move ahead of your teammates. And that gives the illusion of you being early and that'll draw the flag. Spoken like a former tackle. And Montana was running out of 30 seconds. San Francisco. Well, and so he just called timeout to avoid the penalty. That last rush by Montana, 14 yards, their longest running play of the night. And so the Rams uh, defensively now trying to thwart this 49er attack with 319 to go in the third quarter. And Los Angeles on top by 14. You know, this is a big game for the Rams for a couple of reasons. And number one, they still have a chance to win the NFC West, obviously. But also, win or lose tonight, if the season were to end after tonight's game, the Rams would go to the playoffs. If they were to win tonight's game, they would host the Giants in a wild card game. But if they were to lose, they would be behind the Giants in that aspect and would have to play that wild card game at the Meadowlands. Well, at the risk of uh, exciting a lot of people in the New York area, I think that the game would be better played here than in January in Giant <laughs> Stadium. It's been a little chilly and a little frosty back there. But yet I believe that Bill Parcells oh. and the Giants would just as soon have that game at the well, Meadowlands. The 49er playoff game of a couple of years ago, 1986 to be exact. Wiped out the 49ers back there in a very frosty day. First and ten from the 30. Montana throws and the juggling catch is made by Craig, who is out of bounds at the 25. Jerry Gray with the coverage. Second down and five. All the executives around the league making all kinds of 
airplane reservation. Will we go there? Can we get there? Chartering airplanes, booking hotels. Speaking of executives, report tonight that the Jets have asked the Patriots for permission to talk to Dick Steinberg about assuming the role of general manager of the Jets. And been one of the fine ones for years. Second down and five from the 25-yard line. Jones in motion. Montana under pressure, lost it for Craig. Craig, the lose a tackle in the backfield, picks up the first down, is bumped out of bounds by Michael Stewart at the 12 yard line. Little screen pass, called at just the right time. You let him seep in, you get a man in front of Craig. Turns it upfield, and it was Larry Kelm who missed right there. And Craig just high steps it down to the 12 yard line. Uh, the interesting thing here, he had Guy McIntyre out in front, and, and McIntyre elects to pass up Michael Stewart. If he turns and blocks Michael Stewart, that's a touchdown. Montana 69% tonight. Terrific for most quarterbacks, below his season average, though. Over the middle, he tip passes intercepted by Michael Stewart. Out past the 20, and Montana is the man who runs him out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Well, there are back-to-back -back big plays by Michael Stewart. It's Stewart that runs Craig out of bounds and keeps him from scoring, and now it's Stewart being in the right place to take advantage of the tip ball. Oh, Bakersfield High School driller at Fresno State. Now turning in a super job for the Rams, and he has made two key plays. Let's see if we can see from behind who it is that gets a hand on the ball. And that's looks like Roger Craig that actually was going to be the receiver and who the ball behind him and high tried to stab it and bring it back. And all he did was really make it worse. From the 38 yard line, Everett tries to capitalize right off the bat and a great play made by Tim McHire. The forgotten corner, hurt, suspended for insubordination, relegated now to a secondary role playing in the nickel and dime. Defensive setup for San Francisco and makes a great play here. I think the Rams, when they call that play on first and 10, suspected they were going to have Daryl Pollard out of that cornerback spot where they've been working all night long and all of a sudden they see number 22, Tim McHire. And he is a good one. Even with the problems he's had this year, they know that he can perform. From the 37, second and 10, Los Angeles. Here's Bell looking for room. He bursts through the hole and is taken down by Ronnie Lott at the 49-yard line. This is what you're calling for, Dan. A huge hole up front. Jackie Slater out front making a block on that play. Damone Johnson, another one of the Rams. Watch Slater, number 78, pull to the outside. And then he'll turn right upfield, and Bell smart enough to follow his big tackle. Slater pins Michael Walter the inside, and Greg Bell getting a chance to strut his stuff here a little bit. There's Big Jackie in his 14th year. I mean, one of the great tackles that's ever played. What a great guy, too. First and 10 from the 50-yard line. Everett off the hand of Bell and incomplete. Second and 10 with 202 to go in the third quarter. Funny thing about turnovers in the uh, recent history of the series between the Rams and the 49ers. If you go back to, uh, well, over the last uh, roughly seven and a half years, the team with the turnover edge has won the last 15 games. In fact, all the way, what, 1978, that, that the last team with the minus number of turnovers was able to pull out a victory. And you see there the 49ers with the two turnovers, both of them Joe Montana interceptions. Came into tonight with only five, now he's up to seven. That is not standard fare for San Francisco. Second and 10. Del Pino bounces off one tackler at the 44 and gets to the 40-yard line, and that could be a first down. Larry Roberts finally makes the tackle. Very, very close to a first. Robert Del Pino, and he is a very versatile player that's all of a sudden emerging as the Rams running back. He's been their leading rusher for the past three games, and he can give you another dimension out of the backfield that Greg Bell doesn't give you, and that is he's a good receiver. Up close to the first. Mm -hmm. 
It is. <laughs> That's one of those first downs. <laughs> if you lean the bar one way, it's a, it's a first down. If you lean it the other way, it's a, it's a half an inch to go. But John Robinson likes this. This is back to what he likes to do, and that's just hammer away. And of course, it's much more fun to hammer away when you've got a two touchdown lead, which is what the Rams have right here. Seconds ticking up the clock. A minute and a half to go, third quarter, first and 10 LA at the 40. Bell. For two, dragged down by Pierce Holt. Second and eight. You know, one of the reasons that uh, the Rams are getting away from the running game a little bit is that John Robinson feels that the, the days of sitting alone back seven yards behind the line of scrimmage and giving them the ball 25 times are long gone. Teams are now playing a more pressure-oriented defense. They're attacking the line of scrimmage. They're penetrating, and that really hurts that type of cutback running. So look for the Rams next year to go to more of a two-back offense. And those two backs probably going to be Cleveland Gary and Robert Del Pino. Second and nine at the 39. Under pressure, Everett throws it away, and the pressure that time from Charles Haley, and a flag is down. Flag is down in that eight. You can guess who the penalty is going to be called again. It's pretty obvious either. But Charles Haley, not uh, not real excited, and he better be careful, or he's going to be sent to the pine. Gordon McCarter, the referee, almost looked like he was picking himself up off the ground. It looked like he slipped and fell. It would have been third down and nine without the flag here. Let's see. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 94 on the defense. Also, 15 yards, unsportsmanlike conduct, putting his hands on the official protest. 15 more, and 94 is disqualified. Ooh. Oh, he is ejected. 30 yard penalty and an ejection. Charles Haley, disqualified means gone. You cannot touch an official. Well, well, we'll take this thing one step at a time. Let's start with the roughing the quarterback. That's penalty number one. All right, let's take a look at the roughing if we could. All right, there is the ball. That's not roughing the quarterback. Oh, come on. Wait a minute. Haley's in the air. All right, now here's his altercation with the referee. And, and, and that's even a question of he's moving his hands. Boy, that's, I'm sorry, but I, I can't agree with the roughing the quarterback call. Charles Haley nope. is well into Jim Everett when Everett throws the ball. And, and keep in mind, this is a quarterback who's left the pocket now. Absolutely. I'm scrambling and oh, yeah. oh. this has been construed by an official at, well, at I think, speed as a blow to the head. That's yeah. something different. That wasn't. I think Gordon McCarter is a good referee, and that's as bad a call as he has ever made. And that's why Haley got so angry. The ball is at the 12 yard line, first and 10. And here's Del Pino trying to cut it back, and he takes it to the nine. It'll be second down and seven. You know, uh, quarterbacks wear helmets and shoulder pads just like everyone else. Let's look at this at, at regular speed. You are chasing. Oh. Charles Haley was in the air. I mean, uh, it doesn't get any better. We could look at that 35 times, and it's still going to be a raw deal for Charles Haley. And Haley will still be on the sidelines. And, of course, one of the key defenders, the leading soccer for the 49ers, and they lose their ace. Haley's defensive lineman. Haley's gone. 49ers could be as well if the Rams cash in. When we start the fourth quarter, back we come after this from our ABC station. Raspberries. There is a Disneyland. Now, I don't know whether that's Fantasyland or Tomorrowland or Adventureland or just what, but the, it's not far from, from Anaheim Stadium, Main Street, USA. Beautiful Christmas tree right in the middle. All the uh, mice running around with their little ears. Live shot that's just across the Santa Ana Freeway. We start the fourth quarter. 
Second and seven from the nine. Bell gets tripped up at the 10 and plunges forward to about the eighth and has the ball wrestled away, but the play is dead. Ronnie Lott coming through. Yeah, well, uh, there's no doubt that Ronnie Lott uh, is attempting to inspire his defensive team by example. Again, he comes knifing up through there, trying to make the hit. It's been Ronnie Lott's uh, forte throughout his career. He's, he's an intelligent, articulate man, but on the field, he leads by example. I mean, that helmet is going to paint somebody else's jersey repeatedly. Big play, third down five from the seven. And it's a draw to McGee, who takes the ball to about the four. It's going to be fourth down and two. And Lansford and company will be coming in to attempt a field goal. And this would give the Rams a 17 point lead against the team that has lost only two games this season. Rams beat the Niners by one. Packers beat them by four. Most points against the Niners this season, 28 by Philadelphia in the game. San Francisco won 38 to 28. 22 yard attempt. And Lansford splits the upright. And it's now 27 to 10 Rams. We have 1334 Georgia Fronteri, owner of the Rams, widow of the late Carol Rosenblum, inherited this team that tries to pull within a game of San Francisco. From behind the light standard into Anaheim Stadium, built as a baseball only stadium for the Angels in the mid 60s and then expanded when the Rams moved here from the Coliseum. 27 to 10 Los Angeles. Lansford a short kick 13 yard line. Spencer Tillman brings it back out to the 34 yard line. And uh, there it is the uh, what's ever left of the baseball diamond here. Of course uh, the rest of the infield fills in and this will be the home of Mark Langston. I suppose you could say that uh, the one time Mariner and Expo pitcher has become Gene Autry's business partner. 16 million for five years. From the 33 yard line, Montana on first down, a little dump off to Rathman, and Rathman makes the juggling catch. And Fred Strickland is right there to make certain that uh, he doesn't go very far. Rathman by just a little said, Why me? <laughs> Again, I, I've got to go back and, and applaud uh, the Los Angeles Rams and their defensive units tonight, except for the the laps with the long the 92 yard pass to Taylor they have just smothered the 49ers I mean the coverage the tackling the uh, the, the flushing Joe Montana various times out of the pocket forcing the interceptions it's, it's clearly one of their best nights all year second and eight from the 36 is Taylor and he's wrapped up right away covered by Strickland who makes the tackle forward progress takes him to the 39 he's about four yards short of the first down they'll spot it at the 40 third again, down again tonight almost reminiscent of a year ago almost a year ago when the Rams went into San Francisco and absolutely demolished the 49ers who of course would go on to win the Super Bowl but they beat him 38 to 16 and it was on that night that Kevin Green had four sacks individually and he's been a, a force tonight for the Rams there he is Leading the Rams coming into tonight. The 14 and a half sacks. Third and four. Montana to the Ram 40, where the catch is made by Taylor. And he's tackled by Gray. And so Taylor finds the open spot, and they convert on third down, all the way down to the Los Angeles 37 yard line. Rams in their zone. Taylor. Taking it upfield against Gray, turning it in, and getting himself between two defenders, and Montana delivers. Again, the risk you run, though, defensively, when you only come after the quarterback with three people and you don't get there. He's got plenty of time to step up. And step pick, up pick, and see. He'll pick, pick, pick. Career high in yardage, 167 in the game for Taylor. And this time, the tight end, Jones, gets it to the 10-yard line. So Montana with the hot hand, and the 49ers back in business. It'll be first and goal at the 10 on a ball that may have been 
hit just barely. Jones wide open once again as again the Rams attempt to cover the tight end with a linebacker this time is Mike Wilcher. From the side angle it looked like it might have been tipped. It looked apparent from that angle that it was not tipped, that it was a, a legitimate throw by Joe. First and goal, and this is Roger Craig taking it to the eight-yard line. Nose of the ball was right on the 10-yard line. That means they cannot get a first down without getting the touchdown. Second down and goal from the eight. 10-20 remaining. 27 to 10. Rams. Good time to right, come right back to your tight end, Brent Jones. All probability he'll again go linebacker coverage. Here comes the blitz. Walked it into the end zone. Touchdown, Mike Wilson. Boy, Leroy Irvin beaten badly on that play. Irvin just <laughs> somehow mesmerized by Wilson's break. Montana reading the blitz. This is this is a blitz adjustment between Mike Wilson and Joe Montana. Whoa, oh, there's the inside oh. move, and Leroy takes a big bite out of that. Takes a big chomp on that one, and that is an easy 49er touchdown. 49ers use so many slants from their outside wide receivers, Taylor and Rice, and that time Wilson slipped to the left. He gave a real strong move to the end, and it sold all the way. Sulfur for the extra point. That's good. That's Wilson's first touchdown catch of the year. It is only his... 66 of the season and his first catch tonight. And the 49ers pull back with in 10, 27 to 17. As week 14 comes to an end, Rams will be here on Sunday to play the Jets and close out the season in New England. San Francisco goes home. Final two games of the year, Candlestick, Buffalo next week, and Chicago the week after. Mike Colfer to kick off. 27 to 17 Rams who have led all the way. One hopper fielded at the 11 yard line by Ron Brown. And back he comes out to the 25 yard line. Tackle made by Wesley Walls. It's, it's been there the last two games at home. First and 10 from the 26-yard line, and Bell makes the catch and has a first down as he gets it out to the 40-yard line. <laughs> These are the Rams, aren't they? The passing Rams in a situation where you think they'd be taking a lot of time off the clock on the ground. Chuck Knox, George Allen, former coaches of the Rams. Uh, uh, they have to just be kind of shaking a little bit watching this new style of play. Give John Robinson a great deal of credit though uh, reminiscent of of what Don Shula did with the with the Miami Dolphins. I mean coaches who who bend their system to fit their personnel. I mean I think it's a sign of an outstanding coach. From the 40 yard line come fake by Everett. He's going deep and then falling down. Is there a flag. Yes there is. Anderson goes down after the contact from Griffin. Almost looked as though Griffin tried to avoid Anderson. That's a tough call. I, I didn't see any body contact. They may have got their legs tangled. And Griffin pulling his arms back so he doesn't make any contact, but does get entangled with Anderson's legs, and down goes Anderson. Mm. Wow. Well, that's a real tough pass. <laughs> It's tough to play defensive cornerback, isn't it? it? Certainly is tonight. Well, Don Griffin ought to go over and talk to Charles Haley. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's uh, the, the, that, I just don't see that call, and I, it's it's tough to blame George Seifert for being a little upset on the sidelines. He's seen uh, several calls go against his club tonight. That, I mean, I didn't see any body contact, not. and he tried to pull up so he wouldn't make any contact whatsoever. And the ball may have been overthrown to begin with at the 24-yard line, first down. Delpino yards maybe two Larry Roberts makes the stop clock ticking nine minutes to go. Seifert still hot over that call. 
Some major, major penalties against the 49ers tonight. The Haley play, this play, go back to the end of the first half with the holding call on Wallace, negating a touchdown. Second and nine from the 23 yard line. Everett dumps it for McGee over the middle. A flag is thrown. And he gets to the 13, close to a first down. Romanowski and Griffin make the tackle. Flag thrown away from the play by the field judge. And it's going to come back. Pass interference, number 86, offense. 10 yards, repeat, second down. Damone Johnson, the tight end. It's actually Damone Johnson who's who's going to hit Matt Millen, and that's where they're, that's where they're making the call. Here's Damone Johnson, the tight end. Here's Millen. Watch Johnson drive off into Matt Millen. There's Johnson driving off, who makes a break to the outside, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and they call him for uh, offensive uh, interference. Well, Mellon was assigned to <laughs> Buford McGee, and he came absolutely free after the contact. Hey, guys, now wait a minute. Uh, that, that's, that's a horrible call. Second, uh, second and 20. We've had a lot of practice. On second and 20, it's incomplete. Everett putting it up for grabs, and uh, no ram is uh, nearby. Holohan, the uh, supposed receiver. 7.51 remaining. It'll be third down and 18 at the 32 yard line. Elder and Anderson to the left. Cox and Brown come to the right in a four receiver set. And the pass over the middle is caught at the 10 yard line by Henry Ellard and a first down. Henry Ellard, who has played sparingly tonight because of that hamstring pull, makes his second catch and both have been important. But a flag is down back at the 41 yard line. Still worth looking at. Ellard just taking it straight right up in front of Griffin and Everett with that powerful arm drills it in before Griffin, who wasn't in bad position, could react. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 78 defense, half the distance penalty from the dead ball spot. First down, goal to go. Well, that's Pierce Holt, the defensive end, who's flagged for roughing up Jim Everett. So George Seifert, I'm sure, is. Uh, in a state of disbelief as to how many things have gone against this club tonight. Okay, there's Holt, number 78. Oh, and he did come in. Now, he took two steps and threw a mean left forearm right into the kidneys of Jim Everett. And you could see where he took a couple of steps before he makes that hit. Rams take a timeout here. It'll be a first and goal when play resumes with 7.28 to play. So we have a moment, and we're going to take a look at the playoff picture in both conferences. First, in the American Conference, where only three teams have been eliminated with two weeks to go. Granted, uh, several teams have uh, minuscule chances, but there are all the teams with a shot. You see the two teams, Buffalo and Miami, tied in the East. Buffalo holds the tie-breaking advantage. Houston has a game and a half lead. In red now, Denver has clinched the playoff spot. The next color will turn to blue. Buffalo and Houston control their own fate, meaning if they win onto the playoffs, they go as division champions. Then green, the Miami and the Raiders control their fate as wild card teams at eight and six. They'd be in the playoffs if the season stopped today. And if you're in white, you need some help. <laughs> Send up the white flag. And if the Raiders uh, make the playoffs, uh, Art Shell's got to be seriously Ooh. considered for coach of the year. But doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Well, Marty Cotton is right there also. Yep. Here is first and goal from the six. And Delpino takes it to the four yard line. It'll be Delpino. second and goal. 
be a great race for coach of the year in the uh, in the AFC. You think about somebody like Dan Reeves. You know, granted, uh, Denver went to back to back Super Bowls, but they were eight and eight last year, and people thought they were a team on the wane. And look what he did to it. Back he comes, turn that team completely around. Well, at the very least, Wade Phillips ought to win assistant coach of the year. <laughs> no, and also, let's not forget, Don. I mean, how about Don Shula? I mean, that's a team that just uh, doesn't figure to be there. Well, they're tied for first. Yeah, point well made. Second down and goal from the four. And award non coach of the year. <laughs> fumble! A big fumble, and the 49ers have it. And this is exactly what San Francisco needed to stay in the game. Down by 10 with the Rams driving. It's Matt Millen recovering the fumble snap. And it almost looks like Jim Everett comes out early. I mean, that's a veteran center, Doug Smith. And Jim Everett looking like he's trying to come out in a hurry. Oh, no, the ball never comes up at all. That ball never even came off the ground. That ball looks like Doug Smith. It just slipped right out of his hand. I think that's what he's saying. That ball never got off the turf. Rams first turnover of the night, so an early present from Santa for the 49ers to stay in the game as Taylor makes the catch. Eludes Irvin, eludes Newman, chased by Kelm. Down the sidelines he goes. He ran 92 for a touchdown oh. before. He's in again. Oh, this is a very weird game. 96 oh, and I'm glad I'm yards. Here. And he's going to chase Flipper Anderson's recently set receiving record after this one. Well, you do two 90 plus yard catches, and you, you know, 180 plus will get you off to a decent start. And it's not bad for your average either. We talked about it all <laughs> night. The 49ers keep doing this. They keep running the slants, they're running the hitches. Two great runners after they catch the football, and Taylor and Rice said, Taylor, just a simple pattern down in front of Irving, slam it in, breaks the tackle from Irving, gets a Another break down the sidelines. He doesn't have great speed. He has good speed. And trying to run him down, Michael Stewart, he just doesn't get there. What a night for the other receiver of the 49ers. Nine catches, 263 yards. So after the fumble and the touchdown, <laughs> and the Rams get a break here as the extra point is wide. And that's a, a, an important extra point. Instead of a three-point lead, it's a four-point lead for the Rams. Well, that, that's just a mishit ball. And we'll alert our channels and news directors along the line. There will be no tie. Boy, that's a uh, Cooper just mishits that ball. Does it ever come off his foot ugly? Oh. Mm, what a time to miss it. 27-23. Wild game in Anaheim, 27 to 23. The Rams about ready to salt it away inside the five-yard line. The Everett fumble. The next play is a 96-yard reception by Taylor. Again, the NFL record, 336 yards set two weeks ago by Flipper Anderson. Taylor with 263. Kickoff taken at the four-yard line. Brown. He fumbles at the 26-yard line. 49ers think they have it. Waiting for the official to signal. There they it do. is. Keith DeLong. Ann and I were just saying, we wonder how Doug Smith feels. Now we wonder how a Ron Brown will feel. Well, do, I mean, how long ago was it? I mean, we're talking about less than a minute ago. As Al said, the Rams are putting this game away. And the ball slips out of the hands of Doug Smith. Then the long play to Taylor, and immediately the Rams now give it right back. Ron Brown just spits it up. Coming in to make the hit was number 56, Hendrickson. And lo and behold, look at this. They've got 52 minutes without a turnover. Then they turn it over back to back, and Craig takes the ball to the 22-yard line. Brown last week, remember, fumbled on a run back against Dallas, and that led to a Cowboy touchdown and then helped to atone when he caught a touchdown pass to help lead the charge back. But there he is agonizing on the far side. And what a feeling. I mean, what a miserable, miserable feeling. John 
Don Robinson merely saying, Ron, get it together. You, you've got to help us win this ball game. We're going to need you. Second and five, and falling down, and thus it's incomplete. Raffman was falling down and never had control. Third down. Well, that ball was way behind Raffman. And Hawkins is hurt. He's one of the very few remaining defensive linemen for the Rams. The number one draft choice out of Miami. Remember, they're minus Doug Reed. They're minus Mike Peel. And now Hawkins, the rookie, is shaken up. Look at this pass again. Raffman pulls up on Montana and then tries to break it out. He throws it behind Raffman. But this ball never hit the ground. Yes, it did. Yeah, right it did, there. but it, they played it as though it didn't. They thought it came off Rathman's helmet. It obviously was an incomplete pass, but a, a major concern right now for the Rams is mm -hmm. the injury to the rookie from Miami, the number one draft pick, and they are looking at the left leg. And he is in obvious pain. And he was just beginning to, uh, to show the type of skills for which he was drafted and of course with the injuries the Rams have had a chance for him to play on a regular basis. He was the uh, the first of two number one picks. The other was also from Miami Cleveland Gary. Yeah, that's good news is uh, Robinson is out there to help assist him. Well, this pretty well dictates the defense that the Rams are going to have to play. You know, going to have to settle into that Eagle defense where Fred Strickland, number 53, is over the nose, either up or down. Brian Smith is into the game now. Take a look at the bottom of your screen. There's Hawkins, number 70. He throws his leg out to stop himself, and, and something must have popped or, or something happened. Wasn't hit by anyone else. He threw that leg out and then just buckled and went down. There's Strickland. He is Mr. Versatility for the Rams. He'll play nose. He'll play linebacker. He's given him a name as a nose backer. But again, it's a predictable defense now for the Rams. The 49ers obviously well aware of its frequencies. Third down and five. Craig in motion. Montana comes back the other way. It's complete for a first down as who else? John Taylor, the other receiver on a night when he's making Rice the other receiver. That's his 10th catch of the game. First and goal. 10 catches, 278 yards. Taylor left and Rice to the right. Five minutes to go. Montana's thrown for 450 yards. A wraparound handoff to Craig. They love that play. And he gets to the two yard line to make it second down and goal. It wouldn't be a 49er game without a look at the handoff from behind, the wraparound. Almost impossible to see as Nobody a defensive does. player. The whole premise is that is that you're a linebacker, okay? Well, you don't go into your pass coverage until you see the quarterback pass the running back. The minute you see him go by him, you begin to drop. That's the whole premise of the play. Quarterback passes the running back and then hands off. Second down and goal from the two-yard line. Craig fights his way to the one and maybe a couple of inches inside the one. Irvin comes up to make the tackle. You saw Montana with a career-high 450 through the air, and that's also a new 49er record as well. And Taylor has set the record for most receiving yards in the game tonight. But still they trail. Less than four minutes to play. And they trail by four because of the missed extra point. Third and goal. At the one. Trey. And for the first time in the game, the 49ers have the lead. So two huge turnovers. The 49ers capitalize, exploit both, and San Francisco has the lead. Smile from John Robinson. He's been in a lot of games. I don't think he'll ever recall one quite like this, which is far from over. A good surge off the left side for a team that hasn't spent a lot of time running the ball that time. 
the San Francisco offensive line just blew the Rams back into the end zone and they went right after Brian Smith the rookie who came in and took the place of Bill Hawkins Hofer's extra point is good. It's now 30 to 27. And five times this season, Jim Everett has brought the Rams from behind in the fourth quarter. The question now is, can he do it a six? There's a penalty down. Looks like it's going to be against the Rams. And if it is, it's assessed on the kickoff. Holding number 50 on the defense on a successful try for point for a five yards assessed on the kickoff. So it's 30 to 27 Everett leading the Rams from behind I say five times twice though the defense gave the lead back so on three of those occasions he was successful including the last two weeks at New Orleans and at Dallas. Speaking of comebacks <laughs> you think that man has seen a few. Well they were down by 10 points with about four minutes remaining last week and Everett came in and brought them back and this again part of the maturity that John Robinson talked about his young quarterback. He just believes now that he can do it. Whereas the first couple of years of, there was kind of a shakiness to him. He has taken total control of the football team and has turned into the type of quarterback that everyone believes in. And he particularly believes in himself. This is a situation where we saw John Robinson leaning over and, and talking to Ron Brown when he was down on his knees uh, after the fumble. And, I said he's telling him hey you may get a chance to win this thing for us. Well here's that opportunity right now. Brown again deep for the kickoff. Report on Hawkins sprained left knee. He will not Brown, be back. What Brown will do he'll squeeze it this time. He might not even get a chance. He makes the catch four yards deep and he'll down it there and the Rams will have it at the 20 yard line with three minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Jim Everett and the Rams and they have two timeouts remaining as we look ahead 49ers have not won a game after trailing by 17 or more points in almost a decade December 7th 1980 they were down by 28 in that game and came from behind to win it and that's the largest margin ever overcome to win a game in the history of the National Football League. From the 20. It's a one yard pickup as McGee makes a catch at the 21, and Matt Millen is right there to jump on him. Second and nine. Second and nine at the 21 yard line. And quickly, uh, we'll update the vote for you. There it is, the best game of the 80s Dallas and Washington, a commanding lead over the Chicago Miami Tussle. <laughs> this game could get some right in votes. Second down and nine, and it's incomplete, intended for Anderson, and it's broken up by Griffin. Boy, he's had an active night. And a brilliant night. These are tough receivers he's been covering. Willie Anderson, we talked about him setting the record. You have to respect his speed. Clocked at a 4 4 2, and Griffin looking back at the quarterback. Jim Everett makes the move with Anderson, and is back to break it up. Well, this gets very interesting now on third down if the Rams don't get a first down. What do they do? 258 to go. They have to get to the 30 yard line and Everett gets sacked back at the 11 by Pierce Holt who converges with Larry Roberts. It's the first time the 49ers have sacked Everett in 12 quarters and what a time for it. And the Rams are forced to punt, and they'll have to take their timeouts on defense. And they do it with their leading sack man, Charles Haley, thrown out of the football game. And Everett, good coverage downfield. He had plenty of time to find a receiver, had one open. Just good coverage, he couldn't find one. Hatcher's kick, fielded by Taylor at the 45 yard line. And he brings it back to the Ram 46. So the Rams will have to take their timeouts on defense. They'll get a free one at the two minute warning. They have two remaining after a 42 yard punt and nine yard return and 235 on the clock. So here we are in a game where the 49ers trail the entire game 
until the closing minutes of the ball game, and all they need now is a first down to put this thing away. Amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> big plays, big plays will break your back. And John Taylor has broken the back of the of the Los Angeles Rams, at least to this point. From the 47-yard line, here's Craig picking up about five. Rams take a timeout. They stop the clock with 2.25 remaining. For the season to end after tonight's game, Rams and Giants would be the wild card teams, but the Giants would now hold the home field advantage in the wild card game. Second and five. And Gray gets stopped at the 41 yard line. The Rams now have to spend their last time out. And as we say, they'll get a free one at the two minute warning, but that's not going to matter if the 49ers can pick up a first down on the ensuing play. Well, John Taylor had 162 yards last week and five receptions. And you put that together with tonight. That's a couple of other spectacular weeks. Uh, well, that comes close to some sort of an NFL record, but it's a remarkable couple of weeks. You know, it's kind of crazy when you think about Flipper Anderson. I mean, he's uh, a guy who got to play that night uh, as much as he did because of the injury to Ellard. Here's Montana, meanwhile, as you can see uh, what he has done in the second and fourth quarters in particular tonight. It's kind of funny. Ellard is the Rams featured receiver. Rice, of course, is the 49ers featured receiver. But there's Flipper Anderson setting the NFL mark two weeks ago and Taylor setting a 49er team mark tonight. You know, this will be an ironic night for Joe Montana as we see Jim Everett trying to spur his group on. But I mean, here's Joe with 450 yards passing tonight, who I don't really think had all that great a night throwing the football. I mean, he got 180 yards, 190 yards, really, on two plays, of which he actually threw the ball about 20 of the 190. Third and four, if they pick up the first down, you can just about write this one off, and folks, you can put it in ink. Yeah. And who else but John Taylor yeah. to make the catch? Only and the clock will only stop once more at the two-minute warning. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to minimize what Joe has done, but, I mean, here's a guy who's playing hurt. His ribs are killing him. He had to get an injection before the ball game to play. And look at what he's done for his ball club tonight. Wow. Hello, Canton. H.O. Mm Effort. -hmm. There's Doug Smith, the Pro Bowl center of the Los Angeles Rams. That right now, you got to look at the play of the game. Was the Rams are in a position to put it away, and somehow the ball slips out of his hand. He doesn't get the snap up to quarterback Jim Everett, and. 96 yards to John Taylor and, and unbelievably the 49ers are going to win this game barring some miracle at the Meadowlands and that's how you put a guy 25 yards what 15 yards behind the line of scrimmage to make sure nothing goes wrong and that's Jerry Rice <laughs> and it's guaranteed you're not going to get by him on well, this night it should be John Taylor well the 49ers can run out the clock and we can tell you that uh, the executive producer of Monday Night Football is Jeffrey Mason tonight's game produced by Ken Wolf directed by Craig Janoff our technical director Joe Shabo our associate director Alan Brum and a pinch with our assistance to the producer Jeff Kibler Rick Abbott operations manager Dennis Zabo and Hal Danforth Jim Licata our telecommunications manager our director of information the incomparable Steve Hurt our computer statistician Mark Amento Upstairs with us, as always, Mr. George Hill and Topanga Kelly Hayes. I like it. And Thank Drew and Jack, I'm sorry you guys are so cold down there. It's uh, <laughs> warmed up considerably here in the booth. So the 49ers will clinch the West. The other thing that's going to happen now with this victory is, <laughs> our guys, it's not quite a frigid night, but it's chilly here in Anaheim. And the home field. Well, that's Ed, How about exactly. this guy? There's Eddie DeBartolo, and he's getting ready to congratulate his players as they leave the field. He meets them and shake hands with every player on their on their way off to congratulate them. And I mean, this is good. Good teams find a way to win. So the road to the Super Bowl will have to go through San Francisco. That is a guaranteed item after tonight because the Niners will have a week off at the end of the regular season. They can also rest some of their starters. They have clinched the NFC West. 
But Al, you want to know something? If I'm the San Francisco 49ers and I want to go to the Super Bowl, the one team I don't want to play are the Los Angeles Rams. Mm -hmm. And they see him again. Seifert was so excited he was trying to walk off the field with that headset. I mean, that would have to be a long sword. I would not want to play the Los Angeles Rams and have to beat them to go to the Super Bowl. That could be some matchup if they do meet in the playoffs. And if they do, it would be a candlestick park. So the Niners go unbeaten on the road this season. You know, it's funny. Is it a home field advantage or disadvantage? <laughs> Their only two losses this season have been at Candlestick Park. Did we have it all tonight or not? Yeah, great game. Terrific game. 30 to 27 for John well, Al Michaels along with Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff saying good night from Anaheim Stadium in Anaheim, California.